Our bow and string are set up, so let's get the arrow together. If you need any of the assets for this project, you can find it in the description below. All right, let's get started. Coming back to the project, you can see we still have this bow here and it is set up and fixed from the previous part. Now we need to get the arrow together and I've already provided an arrow prefab. You know, what? I'm gonna double click this and one thing you'll notice about it is we have the arrow body here and then we also have the tip marked here and we're gonna be using that later. The only thing I'm gonna add here is a rigid body for now. And after that, I'm gonna come back here and get the spawner going. To get that going, I'm gonna select the bow. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna add a script and I'm going to call it Arrow Spawner. And you can see here, I've already made the script. And if you'd like the source code to this project, please consider checking out my Patreon or you can just follow along in this video. But right, opening this up, let's go over it. Kicking things off here, we import everything we need at the beginning, including the XR Interaction Toolkit. And then we also have a few variables here. We have two public ones. One's gonna store the arrow prefab. The other one's gonna store the notch location. Then we have a few private ones here. This one's gonna store the XR grab interactable, the bow, so we know when it's selected or not. Then we have a bull for when an arrow's notched, so we don't just continuously spawn arrows. And then also what the current arrow is. In the start function, we just grab our XR grab interactable, which is the bow. And then we come over here and for the pull interaction, pull action released, which is that event from the pull interaction with the string, we grab that and we subscribe to it with a function called notch empty. So when pull action released happens, we're firing the arrow. So our notch is going to be empty and we'll be ready to spawn another arrow. And then on destroy, we just unsubscribe from that just to prevent any funky bugs. In the update function, this is where we're going to determine whether or not we spawn a arrow. So if the bow is selected and the notch is empty, then we are going to go ahead and set it to true. And then we're going to start a delayed spawn and that's just because I don't like firing an arrow and then having it instantly spawn. It, it just feels weird. So yeah, that delayed spawn, it's just waits for a second, then spawns an arrow. And that's pretty much it. Coming down here, if the bow isn't selected and the current arrow is not null, then we're just going to destroy that. Ooh, yeah. And looking at this, you know, I should probably call notch empty because we've destroyed the arrow and there might be an instance here where, yeah, yeah, we definitely need to call this. And I'm just going to pass it a random float. It, Sadly, this has to take a float value just because it has to have the same signature as the event. And if you remember over here, its signature is, well, it passes out a float. So that's the only reason it has a float, even though we don't use it. A little sloppy, but you know, it works. So let's get back to our editor and hook this up. Yeah, all we have to put in here is the prefab for the arrow and then also the notch location. And that's it for the spawner. So let's boot it up and see what's happening. Starting it up and picking up the boat, you'll see that the arrow spawns, but then it falls into oblivion. So let's fix that and get the arrow working correctly. Booping back to the editor, let us open up the arrow prefab and add a new script to it. And that script is gonna be called arrow. I know, shocking. Let's open it up and see what we got. Kicking things off, as always, we are starting off by importing the libraries we need, and then we have a few variables to go over. So we have a float for the speed, and then we also have the transform, which is just gonna be the tip of the arrow. And then we also have a few private ones, the rigid body, so we can mess with the physics of the arrow, a bull just to determine when the arrow is in the air, and then the last position, which is going to be the last position of the tip. And I'll tell you about that calculation in a moment. On the awake, we just come in here here we get the rigid body component and then we also go over to the pull interaction or pull action release subscribe to that and that's just going to call our release method and then also I call it stop here which is a method if we come all the way down here that just you know says it's not in the air and also we're setting the physics to false and if you come down here to the physics you can see that it just turns off gravity and then also does the inverse for whatever we pass in for is kinematic. Scrolling back up, we're going to go on destroy. Of course, always unsubscribe for the events that you subscribe to. And well, let's get into the good stuff. So release, this is what's called again when the pull action release is called. And the first thing we do is we unsubscribe from the event, which sounds kind of weird. But the reason we do that is because if we don't, anytime the pull action happens, even if our arrow's not in the bow, it's going to start flying as if it was. We also turn off the notch from being its parent because it's no longer attached to it. We set it to in air. We set the physics to true. And then we also add the force right here. And the value that's going to be passed in, again, is from that pull action released. So it comes in here times speed and forward. And then we add the force to it, shoot it out. We start a coroutine called 
rotate with velocity, and I'll explain that in a moment. And then the last position is equal to the tip position. And well, I'll explain that calculation in a moment too. Now to showcase what's going on with the rotate with velocity, I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out and start things up. And you can see once I pull back, it's shooting the arrow up, but it's not kind of flipping over like you would expect an arrow to do. So that's what we do when we rotate it. Coming back to this, I'm gonna go ahead and put this coroutine back in and I'll explain this method. It starts off by waiting for the next fixed update. And so this is just going to get this function aligned with the physics engine in Unity. When you do physics calculations, you want it to do it in fixed update. And so while this is still in the air, it gets started off on the right foot and then we're gonna update it every single frame just so we don't have like a laggy looking rotation. Then we come in here and we use something called look rotation, which it creates a rotation specified for what the forward and upwards direction need to be with what we pass in. So since we want it to be looking towards where the velocity of the rigid body is going, that's why we pass it in here. And then we just use the game objects up. And yeah, that gives us the right rotation. Now, as I said before, when you do physics calculations in Unity, you want to use fixed update just so it's more consistent. You use just normal update that's done every frame, which can be inconsistent, which will cause physics things to be, well, inconsistent. In here, we just make sure that it is in the air. And if it is, we're going to check for a collision. And then we are also going to update the last position to equal the current tip position. In checking collision, this is where a lot of magic happens. So what we do here is we create a line cast from the last position to the current tip position. If that line hits anything, then we're going to come in here. We're going to make sure the thing that we hit isn't on layer eight. And I've set it to layer eight or to ignore layer eight because layer eight is actually what I've set up to be the body. So I don't want this running into our hands or anything like that and just stopping the arrow because, well, our hands are going to be where the arrow is. It just avoids some bad interactions that we don't want and we'll have to fix a little later. And then we also come in here and we try and see the thing that we hit. If it has a rigid body, then we come in here. We're going to turn off the interpolation. We are going to set the new parent of our arrow to whatever we hit. And then we're going to add a force to the rigid body to the thing that we hit. So, you know, if you hit a small ball, it would go flying. And then right here we call stop, which again, stop just stops the physics interactions and also sets in air to false. And again, sets physics to false. So let's see what we got. And before we boot it up, we need to make sure we go into the arrow prefab and set the tip, which I already have, but yours will be empty. So yeah, let's boot it up, see what happens. Booting things up, you can see I've made some targets there that I've slapped some rigid bodies onto. And yeah, I'm shooting. The arrows are sticking into surfaces and it's all kind of working. Now, one thing I want to point out is why I used fixed update and use this line cast as opposed to using a box collider and using on collision entered. So when I did on collision entered and used a box collider on the arrow, what I found is the arrow would actually stop at the very, very beginning of the tip. Even if I, you know, reduced the box collider pretty far into where the arrow was, it just didn't function as well. So this one has kind of a delayed reaction that I found to be a lot more useful just for this specific use case. Next up, we're going to be going over some polish, like haptic feedback, some sound, and maybe a few particle effects and some trails for our arrow and our bow and arrow. Yeah, that's going to be actually part three. I'll see you in that one. Big love and a shout out to my shrimpos over on Patreon. Without you, I can't do this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.